good morning or good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuri, and I'm working here in Norway with the uh, uh, Tracker implementation. <clears throat> uh, I hope you can hear me well. And uh, Scott, do you see my screen? Uh, can you? Can yeah, you... looks great, and hear you fine. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, I will uh, I will sh show you how to move the uh, uh, Tracker data to aggregate. Uh, data sets uh, today. And uh, as Scott mentioned, uh, you know, with capturing this individual level data in DHS2 does improve the quality of data that we report to aggregate HMIS, but it also, and also helps us, you know, to get to the analysis of data uh, at, as regular as often as required. <clears throat> so I first, uh, 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 got familiar with this question of how we transfer the data when I was working on the TB case surveillance on the tracker module that has been published now in uh, in August, and so uh, my examples that I will share with you will be based on the, on the TB case surveillance. So uh, as you know, uh, for countries that implement tracker, uh, it is recommended that they use two instances for. Uh, one for aggregate modules uh, and one for tracker. And so by main in, maintaining these separate uh, track and aggregate instances, the performance can be best managed by admins and uh, to, so that the data can be protected uh, and uh, used as required. So <clears throat> basically, what we do is that when we collect the individual uh, data in Tracker, uh, it is being aggregated via program indicators. So uh, the, the, uh, the when we produce the analytics in Tracker, sometimes we're lacking those dimensions that the aggregate uh, world allows us to use. And therefore we, uh, we need that step of transferring the data from tracker to the aggregate modules. Uh, and I'm going to talk about two ways of doing that. Uh, one is, uh, you know, more user friendly. Uh, and this is a solution that has been developed by his Uganda. And uh, uh, I, I just would like to say thank you to to my colleagues in Uganda who uh, shared that uh, information with me and helped me uh, at, the, at the beginning <clears throat> and the other way the other solution I will talk about is a script uh, m approach um, that requires more tech uh, knowledge so <clears throat> uh, first uh, the app uh, that you can uh, all use on the D on, in DHS2, it's, it's called the Data Import Wizard, developed by Hisp Uganda. So uh, it has a user-friendly interface. It supports various import types, and you can save your mappings and uh, uh, edit them and uh, uh, have a good way of controlling them. But the consideration that you need well, things that you need to think about as you use that app is that uh, the mapping process is manual and it's best suited for small scale data sets. So basically, if you have to transfer a lot of data from uh, from your tracker to the uh, to the aggregate modules and you have a lot of indicators or data elements to feed, uh, uh, you'll be better off uh, using you think using the other solutions. So, how does it work? I'll just uh, uh, say a few words, and then I will show it to you on the example of our uh, on on the instance. So, when once you install the app from the App Store in DHS2, you have to do it in your aggregate uh, instance, and then you can start with a new mapping. So, and as you configure it, uh, I will walk you through the steps. Now, you will see that it's quite uh, quite simple. So uh, let me see if you can, um, I'm 
We're trying to make sure that you... Scott, did you see that I switched the screen now? You... Yes, we can see that you're looking at DHIS2, the WHO hyphen dev. Yeah, okay. So uh, as you see here is the uh, is my tracker instance with a whole list of uh, program indicators that I have created uh, for uh, for my uh, for my data. And uh, as I said, you know, for for each of the uh, data element in the aggregate set, I have to create a program indicator. So I need to create one for uh, the age disaggregation for uh, sex and so on and so forth. Here is my um, aggregate uh, instance with the report forms on the TB. And as you see, this form is uh, is empty now. So we'll we'll try to fill it in with with some data. So here is the app uh, that I was talking about, the data import wizard. So once I started, uh, it actually serves many purposes. It can help you import dummy data into your uh, uh, instance or data from Excel or whatever, but we are talking about the aggregate import. So <clears throat> once I start a new mapping, so basically I will have an overview of the data sets that are, are present on my in my instance. And uh, here I will go and take the uh, the TB case simplification. So I have to create a mapping name, uh, and choose the import type. So in this case, I'm going to uh, import DHS two indicators into a DHS two aggregate data set. So I go for program indicators. I have to specify the address of my uh, of my tracker instance, which will be this. So I put it, put it in here, and then I have to log in um, with with the uh, system admin password in order that it has access to the uh, to the to the instance. So, see if I get it right this time uh, because in the app you can see the actual password you don't see the stars I have, uh, let's see if I, uh, yeah. so that was right so now here I have to specify what period of time I want my mapping to work for. So I, I will take uh, 2020 and I will take the first quarter. Uh, indicator aggregation level. Okay, so we can do a facility and then we need to map the facilities on the tracker instance with the facilities or with the org units on the, uh, on the um, aggregate instance. But as you see, if the names are matching, then the mapping happens automatically. I don't need to do much here. Then I can filter my indicators. And these are the indicators that I want to send data to my aggregate modules. Uh, and I've been using the prefixing uh, in the uh, TB aggregate, in the indicators that I've created. So I can assign all of that. <clears throat> and then I can move to the next step. Uh, here I have the, uh, the data sets that you see that I need to manually map. And this is what I mentioned earlier, that for data sets that are included just few indicators, this is the way to go with this app. If you have several hundreds or thousands of elements you need to map, this will uh, be a cumbersome process. So <clears throat> let's say here is my age and sex uh, TB form and here I can select the indicators that I, um, uh, <clears throat> that, that can feed into it. And so I can also look for, uh, for the indicators. Okay, so it's this one and 
here it's uh oh no that was a female so sorry uh female and male here and then i will find the uh, one for female here and so on so i proceed like that uh till i reach the end and when i click next so right now i didn't do all of this but uh if i did i would uh, i would be shown uh the i will see the status that all of my indicators in that form were mapped <clears throat> uh i guess it takes uh, the, the it takes so long because of the of the fact that i have not selected everything here yet uh so i will i will just interrupt this process and i will show you uh a mapping that i've created earlier uh and you will see that it's uh what it does so let's see i will move on to the next step so here here are my mappings and here you can see that uh the 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 import summary of my job that I have updated eight values from my mapping uh, and I can save it as a JSON file or I can uh, I can also see oh, sorry. I can I could also see uh, the report on what has been done and if I go to my aggregate uh, module now I, I will be able to see the the data that has been filled in okay so this is how this app works <clears throat> uh, basically what what's in the background uh, the 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 uh, there is a json file that is generated with a payload and then it's uploaded to the uh to the aggregate module so um the next uh, way of doing uh, of moving the data to the uh, to the aggregate modules is the script and here I'm referring to the script that has been developed by Olaf uh, Popper a lot of you might know him and we are now working on uh, up upgrading this script so that it will uh, be more universal in what it's doing and and uh, also uh, provide more feedback to the user once uh, once it's run. So it's a shell executable script that requires the, uh, some initial setup, and I will walk you through that. And uh, you can also set up automated periodic export of data with that script to to aggregate with the uh, well by using let's say a task scheduler. So there's some work that needs to be done for that. And this is where, what I started when I, when I worked on the TBK surveillance. So basically on the aggregate side, you have the data elements and the category option combinations <clears throat> that need to be coded. Uh, so here is an example, as you can see of a uh, data element uh, and the code that it receives. <clears throat> and here's an example of a category option combination with a, with a code. So I will need these codes uh, to map my uh, program indicators in the tracker instance of, in order to, uh, for this transfer to, to, to be successful. <clears throat> so on the tracker, uh, we will need, uh, as you see here, I will move to my indicators. Uh, as you see here, there is an element or an attribute here called category option combination for aggregate data export. So here I map my um, category option combinations from the aggregate um, modules. And I will also uh, need to create a custom attribute, uh, which we call data element 
or aggregate data export. So we can then map it to the data element in the aggregate package. Uh, at this stage, I would, I would just uh, like to point out that there is a um, bug in the current in the DHS2 uh, now that prevents the user from creating the custom attribute for program indicators um, in the maintenance app. We are working on that bug, but uh, when we deliver our generic packages, let's say TBK surveillance, these come with these custom attributes because the, the, these custom attributes can still be uh, injected into the, the, the properties of an indicator via API. So uh, if you have any questions on that or how this can be done, you can, uh, you can get in touch with us and we will help you uh, in this process. But once, once this bug has been resolved, it will be easier for, for users to actually just enter the, those mappings here, because this is where it will appear when you create that attribute. So uh, what, what is done afterwards? So you have a, um, this is what the, the, the script looks like now. So basically, uh, we we need to edit the list of program indicators that we are going to use to push the data. We have to specify the org unit levels at which we do this transfer, as well as the periods. <clears throat> and then uh, we need to specify the data attribute UID, and this is the attribute that I was talking about the for the data elements. And then we need to uh, specify the servers that we're using. So here is our source URL. This is the uh, tracker and our target URL, which is the aggregate package. We make sure that the for date format is correct in this field. Uh, and then we specify the file name that will be created for transferring the data and the comments that will be added to the database. And basically, then we need to uh, update the user and the password on for the for the um, for the servers. And basically, this is it. So uh, we need to because it's a uh, it's a shell script we need to make it executable with the uh, chmod command and then uh we can run it in the in the shell or in the terminal on the mac uh and then if you need automated uh, data transfer you can use the uh a scheduler uh in order to make these transfers periodic uh, and I think I've forgotten to say but in the, the Hispuganda app <clears throat> the uh, data import wizard also offers you scheduling for the jobs that you create there so uh, this is basically uh, what I wanted to show today um, and uh, as, a, as I said, if you have any questions, please use the, 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 the channel on the community of practice to, uh, we'll be happy to answer these questions. And if you need support with the, with, the, with the script or with the transfer from aggregate, please do get in touch with us and we'll guide you in, uh, further in that process. So thanks. Great. Thanks so much, Yuri. There are a few questions that maybe you can answer right away for us here. There's quite a, actually, there's quite a lot of conversation here. So okay. um, the, the, sorry, Let one me... question that's, yeah, one question that's been asked a couple of times, and I think you just answered it, is these, using that application, uh, the History Uganda application, it, you can schedule jobs. So you, once you set up the mapping, uh, you can schedule it to run periodically, correct? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and then what if you have um, aggregate and tracker data in the same instance? Does that app also work for in that situation? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I don't think there, there's any restriction uh, in regard to that. So you will just have to specify the same instance twice. Uh, and then you will be able if the transfer will happen. Mm. Great. Um, then is there, um, are you able to provide contact details for folks who may need assistance using the app or using the script? Yes, with pleasure. So uh, how do I, do I just paste, uh, paste it in the, in the chat here? Well, I can, if you're fine with me just giving out your email, I can paste it here in the, yeah, in the chat or in our, in our, in our Slack. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a step-by-step -step guide that you have for using the application? Uh, we are, I, I don't have a step-by-step -step guide uh, right now. So I can, uh, I can, I can copy w w from the notes that I made for the presentation. And I can uh, upload it to, or I can either post it on Slack or on the community of practice. Uh, and I will also do the same for the for for the script. Uh, if right. yeah. So okay. and, and the script will be uh, with the way it looks now. And so, so basically, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to make it more more user friendly. So it will give you feedback, and it will. Uh, you know, on what it's doing, uh, basically. So there'll be more kind of validation of, of the of the process. Uh, but uh, again, you know, the the the, the interface uh, requires more time than uh, than the actual you know script that does the job. Right, right. Yeah, that those would be two very useful resources. Um, another question is: Are we using that same app? Are you able to? Um, uh, move data to have interoperability between two DHIS2 instances that are just having aggregate data. For example, you have aggregate data in one and, and you want to move that aggregated data to another. Are you also able to use that app for that? Uh, I have not tested it for this, but from what I see when I, when I create, uh, when I create a new app, so let me just uh, create a new mapping. So uh, yeah. use this feel free app. to, you can share your screen again. As well. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, we are here now. Okay. So if I if I take my uh, create a new mapping, so th these are the options that I have. I have uh, DHS two to DHS two data set, which I think is the answer to the question. So mm -hmm. I can uh, move data from one data set to the other, uh, or from indicators, let's say I could even uh, uh, move the data from the aggregate indicators here to the DHS2 data set. Right. So okay. both, both, both ways are possible. Cool, that's great to see. And I think we actually have some HIST Uganda folks that are participants. And so um, they're actually answering some of the questions themselves, which is really cool. Uh, and in general, I think it's important to point out that this is a great example of how the DHIS2 community is able to help e each other, right? So we're, what, what Yuri is presenting is not an app made by the University of Oslo. Is, an, is it a fantastic app made by, the, by um, HIS Uganda? And it's just made in a generic way so that everyone in the world can use it. But that being said, if you are using this app and you are dependent on this app, I would strongly encourage you to consider supporting His Uganda. You know, everything in DHIS2 is open and free to use, but that doesn't mean that things are sustainable indefinitely. And I just want to strongly say and encourage you that if you start to use this app, appreciate that this app is not developed by the University of Oslo and that there's a development team in Uganda that is working to keep this app alive. And if you are dependent on this app, I would strongly encourage you to get in contact with His Uganda. We can provide those contact information and talk to them about how you can support their effort to develop, continue to develop and keep this app alive. Um, there are many apps in DHIS2 that 
uh, there, you know, the University of Oslo, we only make, we only develop about 30 apps, but there are over 100 apps out there. Um, and so if there's a good chance that you're actually using an app that we didn't develop, and uh, if you want to continue using these apps, uh, um, I strongly encourage you to figure out who developed them and then to figure out if you can support them. In this case, His Uganda, fantastic app, so good that we're supporting it or, or that we're presenting it here in the, in the academy is kind of one of our default solutions. Um, there is one more question for you, Yuri. Have you, are you aware of the Metadata Sync app at all? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, well, uh, is that what is that what is called a metadata sync? I think uh, uh, the question is coming from Lisa from WHO. She's asking if we're aware of the metadata sync app, and it would be nice if we joined the efforts. Um, it's, I'm not fully aware. Again, there's many apps being developed all the time. Uh, I'm finding out about new apps, you know, almost on a weekly basis myself. I'm not aware of that app, and maybe that app may do something similar. I'm assuming. I have, I have, a, this I have seen this app. Uh, uh, to be honest, I have not tried it out, uh, but it's uh, uh, the it's the metadata sync app, right? So, and I, I looked at it uh, briefly when I was preparing for this because I, I I wanted to make sure that you know I see if, if there are other apps that serve the same purpose uh, because i'm sure you know that even with this script that i presented that we might have uh, some uh, uh, community members that have developed their own ways uh, and maybe they're more advanced than what we than what i shared <clears throat> and this is just to uh just to uh, emphasize what you said about the the power of community so it, it is great that we can uh, reach out to each other and get each other's support in this. But uh, I will definitely look into the Metadata Sync app uh, and uh, and see what it will what, what we Yeah, it's do. coming from Lisa Grout and Tina Kunjuman. Uh, I think that they would, maybe we can connect the dots and, and they can reach out um, yeah. as well. They just posted a link to it. Uh, Scott, by the way, can you add me yeah. to the to the Slack channel uh, for, for yeah. this. Thanks. We'll have we'll have Martin do that as well. Okay. Scott? Yes. There are two questions about using this app to import data from Excel into Tracker on uh, announcements, I think. Have you experienced that, Yuri? Or I believe Sam from His Uganda is also in the call. Um, have either of you imported data from uh, Excel into Tracker using this app? I haven't been using this app for that purpose, but uh, maybe Sam can, can, can answer the, the question. Oh. Hello. Hello. Nope. Hey there, Sam. Uh, hey, how are you? So um, I was working with the Afghanistan team and uh, specifically this year, we used the app to import tracker data, <clears throat> which was coming through Excel from the provincial health directorates. So it is possible to import it using the tracker app, the data import wizard. Great, I think that's a very clear answer. Thank you so much. And again, example of the power of the community is that Sam just happened, you happened to be here and be the, the right person to answer the question at the right time. So that's fantastic.